Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. So at the end of the last episode I was talking about how I've got this nice shiny new um, core fragment processing facility set up up here where we've got the core fragments being churred out by these drills here going through the processing yada 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 and making all of the stuff I need. Great, it's all working generally pretty nicely but there was a problem. So I was using, let's see if I can find the spaceship, I was using this spaceship to bring all of the core fragments back to Norvis for processing. And as you can see, the core, the ship is loaded through these three underground belts and unloaded through these two underground belts. So that meant I was limited by sp the speed the ship could load and unload by the speed of these belts. So we we're limited to what, these 45 a second, so 90, 90 per second unloading and 135 per second loading. and that's not very quick when you want to load several thousand core chunks. So I had this vague idea that I was going to um, be going to do a, a massive upgrade and in order to speed this up I thought a good idea would be, let's look at the new ship, would be to have trains park inside my spaceship like this. And so the idea behind this is the trains fill up with the train well, the, the spaceship will land on the on the uh, the remote planet and there will be two tra two completely full trains waiting for it that can then just drive straight into the spaceship because these at the end of the ship we've got these doors across the railway lines so so those open to allow a train to drive in and at the same time or rather just beforehand these two trains will drive out and park on the planet wait for the next and and, and then load up and, and wait for and the month therefore they can wait for the next spaceship so this seemed like a good idea as you can see we, we, I've also improved the refueling system a little bit by having three underground pipes to, to fuel these tanks etc which has, has helped quite a lot so yeah that was um generally I think quite a good idea and in theory it should all work quite nicely however it was quite complicated should we say in, in, to, to get it actually working properly so there were a few things I need to, needed to detect so up here we've got this is basically the same sort of system as I normally have with various combinators that are looking out for various states like this actually should be at 20,000 not 2,000 I used to change that for some testing purposes so we've got this one's lot watching out for the right amount of core fragments. This one's watching out for being on, in this case, Myokin, and this one's watching out for having, uh, um, and this one is watching out for having enough trains in the two two trains in the ship. So as long as there's two trains in the ship, there's at least twenty thousand core fragments, and we're on Myokin, then it's a uh, so we get the three ticks through there. Then we can say, okay, that's great, fly off to Norvis. That's relatively straightforward. Um, the hard part of that was getting a reliable way of finding the, uh, the train, getting a train signal through, uh, getting a signal through when there was a train in the station. Now it doesn't matter so much on the Miokin end because we could we could look at the amount of we could look at the amount of stuff on the spaceship and go, yeah, okay, it's over twenty thousand um, core fragments. That's enough. That that means there's two trains in that have both got some stuff in them. Fine, let's launch. Coming back though from Norvis is a bit trickier. So if we look down here, we need to say if you're on Norvis and if core fragments is zero, meaning the trains are empty. Now, if the trains have just both left, the trains would be empty. So it would we'd not be getting any signal there or they're um, coming through. So we need something else as well. And that's why I've got this C equals two. And there are a few things I've tried with that. So if we look at this signal down here, you can there are all these th options in here you can use. You can you can um, you can send the circuit network to the train. You can turn the stay station on and off based on signals. Um, you can set the tra how many. You can limit the number of trains going there. You can read what's on the train. Now this is quite useful. This tells me what's on the train. So this is how I know when there's 20,000 or when there's no um, core fragments on there. And you can read whether there's a stop train, you can read the train count. So at first I thought, yeah, let's use the train count, that's perfect. It'll tell me how many trains, um, how tell me how many trains, it'll tell me if there's a train in that station. But no, it turns out it doesn't do that. It tells you the number of trains that are either at the station or want to go to the station. So I was getting out numbers that were wrong and the space was taking off when they only had one train in. Or in one particular case, even worse, it took off when there was only, when there were one and a half trains in it. Um, and that was, that was messy. It ended up splitting one of the trains in half and destroying a, um, and destroying a, uh, what do we call it? Um, destroying one of the wagons on the back on, on the back of a train. So that that clearly didn't work. I then discovered there's this thing where you read stop train, stopped train. So you can output an ID signal um, with a unique number for the train. Now the problem with this is the train number could be almost anything. So in in this case, it's um, uh, two thousand three hundred. And on this one, it's about 2,300 as well. So 
that that wasn't going to work. I couldn't just feed that straight in and, and, and watch for that to go positive or go to greater than two or anything like that because it's because they're numbers and I don't know exactly what the numbers are going to be. In this particular case, yeah, sure, I could have said if it's greater than 4,000 or if it's greater than 3,000, then launch because that would mean both of these trains are in there. But if later on I get a train with an ID of 5,000 just because that's how train IDs eventually work and they eventually get that high, then that would cause it to fail. So what I did was I put in these... Um, these combinators in here and these are watching for s in the, in the case of this one for s to be bigger than um zero and in this case for t to be bigger than zero so one of these is outputting s the other one's outputting t and when that so when they're both greater than zero that means there's a, a train in both stations and it will output that and then they'll both output a c each and we can check for c equals two up here now it's just occurred to me that this is actually a slightly inefficient use of combinators um, i could have i could have made these um I could have required four ticks to take off and had these output a tick each. So maybe I'll maybe I'll change that in the future. Or you know what? Maybe I won't because it's not broken. <laughs> and the amount of hassle I've gone through getting this to work has been ridiculous. So I think I'll just leave it well alone. So that gets me the signals I need. Here we have this signal means you're on Norvis. This signal means your trains are empty. Or at least there is no core fragments in the in the spaceship and this one means there are two trains in the ship so when all three of those go 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 tick then it gets you get three coming out here and it passes all the signals through and we blast off and we fly well in this case we fly up into Norvis orbit because we need to re need to refuel we then check for the fuel level uh, I don't know which which one that is one of the one of these um, must be this one yes checks checks for the fuel level we say is fuel at 590,000 are we in Norvis orbit and if we get both of those as ticks then we launch again and that time we launch off to Miokin. it's quite a long way to Miokin though so we've got another two minutes in order to get there so well let's let's spend the time talking about setting the trains up because that's um interesting and also has been quite difficult so in here we've got this is uh, this is the trains the train schedule we've got and now we, we, we I ran into a bit of a problem with this so it turns out if you have a, a station where it says where the train thinks there are no stops of that name and this affects both train stops where there's no name sorry no stops of that name or where there's no open stops of that name um, and that's that's something I ran into as a, a slight problem before if we have a look at um, Norvis I had my ammunition train wherever it wherever it rests here it is and this was set up in the same sort of way to go outpost supply pickup out ammo train artillery um green ammo pickup oh yeah so it loads up with most of the supplies it loads up with the artillery shells then it loads up with ammunition then it goes off to an outpost and the outposts are set typically here's one so that when the um when, when it, it disables when everything is less than zero and that means the train will never go there um, because the, the station turned off if you look at it you can see the red lights on it here to say that the station is deactivated and that's so that's watching that's watching the contents of these chests and subtracting the, the number in this combinator from those and the problem is if all of those turn off then the train will just end up going around the loop and doing all the rest of its stations again and no, not that. Again and again. So it'll go around. It'll just go around these three stations forever, clogging up the railway lines and wasting fuel. The fix for that is to put one of your stations in, or, or more actually. It doesn't matter how many it is, as long as it's more than zero. So this station here, I've got the train limit being set. So there's a slightly more complicated set of combinators in here. And this one's saying if anything is less than zero, then out. No, if yeah, if anything is. Less, yeah, if anything is less than zero, then output a tick. And this is watching for tick and setting the train limit based on that. And that fixes that problem. So, let's go back to the um, the swan, which is probably nearly there now. There we go, perfect timing. So that then lands on, on Norvis like that, on, on Miokin like that, sorry. The trains pull out, and then they join the queue here. Now, there's a slight... Problem is too strong a word, if I'm being honest, because the, the, the North, Miokin is quite a small planet, and that means these drills run quite slowly. They don't produce huge amounts of, um, of, of, of core fragments, so it takes quite a long time to fill one of these trains up. Okay, that, that wagon is full. That one is... Yes, these, as you can see, they're sort of half full. This one seems to fill up quicker for some reason. I think it's because this isn't a proper 4 to 5 balancer. It's a 4 to 6 balancer because I can't count. So I should probably fix that. Um... But what I can do is I can wander over here how much space I've got in my inventory, a reasonable amount. I can grab that and I can just shove this in some of these other wagons just to get rid of it and get the train ready to go. Um, I haven't got enough to fill it up completely. So let's just let's just do this manual. Let's set this set this train. So as you can see, the train has all of these all of these instructions in it. 
At the moment, it's at the core pickup station, um, which means it's waiting there for a full, full cargo infantry. And when that fills up, it will then automatically go to the wait station, then to the spaceship. I'll talk about the wait station in a moment. So it goes from core pickup onto the spaceship and then it will wait on the spaceship until it gets a circuit condition saying it's anchored on um, on, Mioc on, on on Norvis. Sorry, let's try and get these names right. Um, and the way this works is that we've got the um, the output from, from the console here tells it what planet it's on. So you can see the A there is, is 1100 and something and that means Miokin. I think it's 1133 but I'm, don't hold me to that. It outputs that saying yes I'm anchored on this planet and that gets passed through the sense through the through through down to here to this station here where it gets sent to the train due to this command so the train knows when it's on Norvis and then it will try and go to the next station so when it gets to Norvis it'll be there will then be a core unload station that it can go to because there is one on Norvis for it to do the unloading it will merrily trundle out it'll go to core unload it'll empty its cargo inventory and then it'll go back onto the spaceship again and it will wait there until all of these are true and in this case we're seeing circuit conditions greater than zero that means it is anchored somewhere and circuit condition is not 510 so it's not on Norvis and it's not in Norvis orbit and this is important to have this set up like this rather than just saying if you're on Miokin because I intend in the future to have identical spaceships to this going off to other planets as well and having basically identical setups to this and on those other planets we're going to need the um, we're going to need to use the same trains because each time the ship goes it, when the ship takes off it'll take a different two trains to the ones it had when it landed and the same is true on Norvis as well so you're always going to be the, the trains are going to be steadily shuffled and being be sent being sent off to different planets all, all the time and that means that you can't rely on these being the Miokin trains that just won't happen um, so yeah so that's why this is set up to say you are somewhere but that somewhere is not Norvis and is not um, Norvis orbit. So because those are the other two places where it stops. Now the other, the reason I've got these wait stations in there up here is this this station is called wait, and that means that instead of this train just sitting here once it's full and waiting for a spaceship to turn up that it can park in, instead it um, it will go out and wait at the wait station which means there's room for the second train to pull in and start loading up. Now on, a, on, on this on this planet it's not such a big deal because we don't have a decent throughput of, of core fragments. However on a, on a bigger planet where this is streaming out much much faster and perhaps it's a bit further away from Norvis so that the ship flights take a bit longer it'd be nice if the ship would land and the two trains would be, absolute, would be ready to go as soon as possible they'd go straight back into the spaceship and the spaceship could take, to take off again straight away. As I said that's not happening here because the supply is so low so we've got our first train is still filling up it's a um i don't know if there's an easy way to tell uh three quarters full roughly yeah so it, it's not full the second train hasn't even started loading and the two trains are coming off obviously they've not started either but once this train moves this one can pull in and then these two will be out of the spaceship so it's ready for the others to come in and, and, and load it up so the second thing I've done, and the reason there's two stations up here, I've mentioned the wait station. The reason there's another one here, and this one's called Spaceship, but it's set with a train limit of zero. And that comes back to what I was talking about earlier, where if you have a thing, if you have this system set up and without the weights, without the space, without the spaceship, what I'm going to call a hack station in there, because it's a dirty hack to get around a sort of a, um, a limitation or a design choice of the game. So what happens with these? is that when the spaceship takes off if you don't have that spaceship station the train leaves core pickup it goes to wait and then it goes oh there's no core unload station i don't care i'll i'll carry on to the next one oh, I'll, i'm at wait already okay i'll try and go to spaceship oh there's no spaceship station i'll go to core pickup so you end up with the trains just sort of sitting there sitting in the station here in the wait station trying to go to core pickup and then when the spaceship comes back, they run around in circles and everything just goes goes wrong and nothing works. And I end up getting very, very frustrated and beating my head against a brick wall trying to work out what on earth is going on. <laughs> so, yeah, that took a bit of solving, that one did. But now it is working nicely. Um, with the, with the, the, the hack spaceship station in there, the train goes to, from core pickup to wait. And then it goes, OK, I'm at wait. I want to go to a spaceship station. There it is. I'll wait for it to become. Oh, there it is. I'll wait for it to become available to go to. The station never becomes available to go to, of course, because it's always locked to a train limit of zero. But that means when the spaceship turns up and there are two more stations called spaceship, 
then the train will drive onto the will go aha a station i can go to it'll pull onto the train and it'll park there and then it will and then it will start to actually behave itself which is you know kind of a rarity in this game and then everything works and it's all hunky dory and we're all happy at least I, I say that i've not had this do a complete loop yet without me interfering with it in at least a little bit in some way and because i want to show you it working i'm going to interfere with it a little bit here i'm going to tell this train to pretend you've got a full inventory and go to wait and then this train will pull in and it will fill up a little bit as well so you see this is how how the process works the train immediately goes into the um into the spaceship this is where it should be when the when the ship arrives so then we've got room for these two trains to pull out and start wait and, and wait in the uh, in the siding down here we then have the second train filling up and yeah let's say that one's full as well so that's now filled up it can pull out and go over to wait and it goes okay there's a, there's a um a spaceship station let's 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 go let's go to the spaceship so it does that and it pulls in here now at this point if these trains were actually full you see i've got 10,000 um uh, what do you call it? Core fragments on this one, but I've only got 954 on this one. So if they were both actually properly full, which neither of them are, we'd have well over 20,000 core fragments in here. Um, as it is, we've got 11. So if I go into here and I change that back to two, this is why it was set to two earlier because I was testing it like this. Set that to two. The spaceship now leaves, Blip, just like that, and the trains carry on filling up and so on as as, as you'd expect. So this is this is. No, this is now normal in inverted commas. I've just sort of cheated to make the spaceships depart a little bit sooner than they would otherwise. So let's go back and set that number back to 20,000 while I think of it. Uh, so I don't forget. There we go. Now we can look at our star map and we can see the swan here. I, I, need, to ch I need to swap the names of these two ships over really because this is now the Kormiokin, Um And this one is just a spare that I may well rip apart and use for, use for parts later. Because <laughs> I think I now want to move on to the... Um, Onto, onto these these train uh, train based spaceships. So one of the things I wanted to talk about, and I'll do this while we're waiting for the spaceship to fly from Myokin back over to Norvis. So as I was saying, the, the reason, the whole reason I've um, I've switched from the old design where we have, you can, I can't zoom in on this, but you can see the two warehouses in there for the um, for the supplies over to this one where we've got the um, the trains in there. Is as I was saying at the beginning of the episode, it's for speed of loading, speed of unloading. Uh, the trains take the trains can swap over in and out very very quickly um, especially when the other trains are ready to go so as you'll see when it gets back to Norvis and everything fingers crossed will work perfectly so yeah when when, when everything is working smoothly like that it's, it's really really quick to swap the trains over and, and empty the ship the downside of, of using the um, using the trains is they're much lower density of um, of stuff so if we look here we've got two, two warehouses these are 512 stacks each so that's uh, 1024 stacks of um, of whatever and okay I was wasting quite a lot of the space in this one because I didn't care very much but it was because um, I had so much space available it was but it was still 512 stacks of um, of core fragments from that if we have a look at the swan this consists of two trains with five wagons on each, and a wagon is has um, 40 slots available in it. So between the two trains, we've got 400. We've got 400 stacks available instead of 512. So it's only it's only carrying 80% of the, the amount of stuff that the other ship was. It also moves slightly more slowly because it's a bigger ship. Um, so it, it, it's a much less it's a much less dense way of carrying stuff around. However, I think the, the speed of loading and unloading more than makes up for it. And if I get to a point where I feel actually this isn't fast, this isn't um, carrying enough stuff, it would be quite, it'd be almost, it'd be trivial, or at least very, very easy, to make this ship a little bit wider and, um, and put some extra rails in as well. Now, it wouldn't be um, quite as trivial as you'd hope. I'd have to put in, it would have to be one, two, it'd have to be four, four squares wider in order to get past the... Um, uh, the, the stations and to, to, in order to fit the stations in which is a is a bit of a shame I'll admit um, I can't really think of a good way to get around that at the moment however that and, and so that would leave a, a gap two by uh, two by n all the way up here and all the way down here uh, but in theory I could potentially redesign the ship a bit shuffle the, I could shuffle this engine across two squares um, maybe redesign it so I have have I have more of the uh, fuel tanks and the solar panels up the middle and then all of these combinators down the gaps and so I could make it I could make it reasonably efficient or you know I could just have a little bit of wasted space I say wasted space as if it doesn't matter looking at the uh, looking at this ship's um, hull stress 
the um, there's very very little container stress because apparently trains don't really count as containers which is interesting and also as i said there's not a huge amount of storage on here so perhaps it maybe it takes railway line into account for the container stress i don't know i'll have to look into that but the whole stress is already above 50 percent of the maximum i can i can do at the moment so i can't make a ship twice as literally twice as big as this but i reckon i could probably squeeze an extra two trains on either side of it so we've still got another minute to go before we get back to Norvis, but that's not too bad. So the, 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 the flight between the two takes sort of three or four minutes, which is not too bad. Um, it just means I have to keep thinking of things to talk about, especially when I'm streaming and I can't speed the video up. But as is, I think this, I think this double, double train design is probably going to be about right for, um, certainly for Miokin, where it takes so long to fill up. And probably, to be honest, I think other planets as well. It's we'll we'll we'll, we'll see how what the um the sort of the the rate is. If we if we find I put one in on say Tulip and the um and the warehouses are filling up and up and up and there just isn't enough throughput to take it away, then yeah maybe I'll I'll consider at that point putting in some four uh, four train spaceships because that will will speed things up a little bit. It'll be a bit uh, a bit more efficient. Right, five seconds to go. We are nearly at Norvis. And hopefully when we land, you'll see what I mean about the speed of the unloading and the, sort of the return. So there we go, the ship has landed. Out comes one train. I don't know why the other train hasn't left yet. Something has gone wrong here. It's trying to go to spaceship. <sighs> okay, so I'm I'm having some problems with this. Put it that, let's put it that way. I'm not sure why, but sometimes the space, sometimes the trains on my spaceships don't be, aren't behaving. I'll... Oh... Uh, Oh, it's not getting the circuit condition through, so it's not leaving the train. That's very interesting. Let's have a quick look at that. So here we go. We've got centre train is set there. We've got... This is hooked up to the same as everything else. Yes, yeah, it is wired up to there. It's wired up to there, to there, to there, to there, to there, to there, to there. All the way up to here. Where we're getting the, the 510 on the A, A signal. Centre train. We've got we've got read train contents and that uh, sorry read read train contents and read stopped train. So let's check that out. So we've got this this station isn't passing signals through properly. It's wired. It's wired to everything, but it's not the station is broken. Is the S coming out? No, it's not. There's something. There is something actually wrong with this station that's stopping it from working. I don't know what it is though. That it is if I if I mouse over it, it's highlighting. All of that is linked up. That looks all right. So why isn't that stage? Hmm. That's very strange. On the plus side, I seem to have found what might have been causing the issues. On the minus side, I don't know why. That's something I'm going to have a look into. I won't make you sit through it all. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll try and have an answer for you in the next episode. So, as always, thank you for watching. If you want to see me trying to actually solve these things on on camera, on screen, on, in real time, then uh, please come along to my streams. They're every Tuesday evening at, um, at 7.30 UK time. We also have, on Thursdays, we have a Factorio Industrial Revolution stream. That's um, good fun. Me and some of my friends trying to uh, trying to deal with the crazy long production change in Industrial Revolution. <laughs> and there's GTA videos coming out twice a week where I usually running around me running around the city with my friends trying to hunt me down um, use it without using without using the map but with various sort of little clues here and there to help them try and track me down amongst all the other traffic around the city I hope to see you next time thanks for watching and I'll see you then